Hello friends, this video on how do organisms reproduce part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so let us see now how DNA gets copied from two parents. So now let us try to get some rough idea about how DNA gets copied from two parents. Now in one of the previous slides, I already told you where is DNA located in our body. So inside our body, the, which is com composed of cells, now inside each cell, we have a nucleus. So when we look at this nucleus more closely, it looks somewhat like this, where at the center we have a nucleolus and these thread-like structures are chromosomes. So they are chromosomes. Now, the number of chromosomes in a species is fixed. For example, in human beings, there are 46 chromosomes. So, 46 chromosomes exist inside each cell of our body. Now, when we look at this chromosome even more closely, they look somewhat like this. So, it looks as if there are two strands which are joined at between. So, two strands which are joined here. So, this structure which joins these two strands is known as centromere because it joins them at the center and each of these strands is known as chromatid. Now you also see some yellow colored structures here. So these structures are nothing but genes. Now again when we look at these genes closely so we see that they are made up of DNA. This is how the structure of DNA looks like. What is DNA? DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Now what is this DNA? What does it consist of? This DNA actually contains the information which is needed for protein synthesis. DNA actually tells what kind of proteins needs to be synthesized right so here the strands the dna is made up of two strands this is one strand and this is another strand so what is there here i mean what are these lines inside dna these are nothing but these are a sequence of nucleotides it is made up of nucleotides now what are all these things nucleotides nucleic acid they are all made up of proteins if you have when you go to your higher classes maybe in class 12 you will have a lesson on biomolecules where you will study the relationship between these kind of um, molecules like the nucleic acids amino acids proteins and where do you see them in biology so then you will learn about more of these structures. So for now you can just understand that it consists of a sequence of nucleotides. Now this sequence actually decides what kind of protein needs to be synthesized. Right? So what kind of protein will be made? For example, let us suppose that this is a DNA. Okay? And let us suppose that the nucleotides which are present up till here, they all code for hormonal proteins. So they all together are making or they are actually giving the instructions to make what kind of proteins? Hormonal proteins. So this set segment of DNA which codes for one type of protein is known as gene. So we will call this segment of DNA as a gene. Similarly, let us suppose there is another segment of DNA which codes for structural proteins. So we say that this is another gene. Because see, when we talk of gene, there are many traits, there are many characters which are carried by gene. For example, as I gave you one example before also, that somebody has high blood pressure and he says that th that problem is hereditary. It is getting transferred from one generation to the next. So that is one trait. So that is carried by a gene. Similarly, for example, here, if I say that the first set of DNA or the first segment of DNA, they all code for hormonal proteins. Now, what do hormonal proteins do? They will actually decide the growth and development of the body because hormones actually control the growth and development of the body. There are growth hormones. We have studied all these things in the endocrine system, right? 
So when when this part of the DNA controls the synthesis of hormonal proteins, so that means this part of DNA actually decides what kind of growth and development a person will have. Whether the person will be tall or he will be short, he will be fat, he will be thin, right? Similarly, the next set uh, decides that what kind of structural proteins will be made. So that means it will decide the structure of a human being, whether he will have what kind of features, whether he will have what kind of complexion. So all the structural things will be decided by this part of DNA. So now you can understand that DNA, what is DNA? It is, uh, it is just the basic part of a gene. Inside chromosomes we have gene and the gene is made up of DNA. DNA is nothing bad but it is a sequence of nucleotides. So we will talk about the structure in detail in our next lesson. Not now because that will consume a lot of time here. So for now you just understand it is made up of a sequence of nucleotides and that sequence decides what kind of proteins will be made. Now as the type of proteins differ, the characteristics also differ. Right? Okay, so now when this DNA, now what happens in case of reproduction? In case of reproduction, each parent will make a copy of their DNA. Right, that is what happens in reproduction. So let us see what happens in case of a reproduction. Let us suppose if this is a family, so this couple gives birth to this kid. So what happens? Father has his DNA, mother has her DNA, right? So both of them will create a copy of their DNA. Then these two DNA copies will combine to form the DNA of the daughter. Now, just before some time I told you that the number of chromosomes is fixed in human beings. It is 46 chromosomes. So now if I say that this father will make a copy of his DNA, mother will make a copy of her DNA, two DNAs will combine to form the DNA of the child. So does that mean that the child will have the double DNA? So, child, so the child will get both two DNAs. So two DNAs will combine to form double DNA. So the child will have double number of chromosomes. Because what is DNA? DNA will form the gene. Gene will make the chromosome. So when the number of DNA will increase, the number of uh, uh, chromosomes will also increase. Right? So does that mean that the daughter will have the double number of DNA? That is not possible, right? Because in every human being, the number of chromosomes remains fixed. That is, the number of chromosomes is always 46. So what happens there? What is the clue behind that? Now, what happens is that in our body, there are certain specialized cells which have only half the number of chromosomes and, the half, and half the amount of DNA as compared to other cells of the body. That means inside our body, we have so many different cells. The cells are specialized to perform different, different functions, right? But the basic structure of all the cells remain the same. So now in the human body, every cell contains 46 chromosomes, except some specialized cells. Those specialized cells will contain half the number of chromosomes. That means instead of 46 chromosomes, they will contain 23 chromosomes. So now when these specialized cells of the father and the mother will combine, then what will happen? 23 from mother, 23 plus father, so it will combine to form 46. So the total number of chromosomes in the child will be 46. Right? So that means this process of reproduction starts with those specialized cells. And what are those specialized cells? Those specialized cells have got different names. They are called germ cells. They are also known as sex cells. They are also known by the names gametes. So these are different names of those specialized cells. So these are the specialized cells in our body which have half the amount of DNA. Therefore, when they combine with the other specialized cell, the number of amount of DNA becomes same as that present in all other cells in the body. So is that clear? Now I am sure that there would there are questions which have not been answered in this slide like the exact structure of DNA, how exactly the DNA makes its copy. 
so that is known as dna replication so we will talk about all those things in detail when we deal with the next lesson on heredity and evolution so for now you got this idea about sex cells or gametes right because now we are going to discuss about the exact process of reproduction so there we will be using these terms gametes and germ cells very often so let us see what are gametes these are the sex cells now these gametes in some organisms the male and female gametes are identical to each other now when we are talking about sexual reproduction we are definitely talking about two parents right so when there are two parents that means there should be sex cells from both the parents so from one parent they so from the male parent male sex cell should come from the female parent female sex cell should come now it is seen that in some organisms the male gamete and the female gamete are exactly similar to each other there is no difference at all for example let us suppose if this is the male cell this is the female cell right so now when both of them are exactly identical sometimes it becomes i mean it it then we cannot differentiate between who is male and who is female because both are same so in that case they are sometimes not referred as male and female instead of that they are referred with the symbols plus and minus so plus and minus de denotes the two different parents because they do not have any dissimilarity so that we can say that okay this one is male and this one is female both are same so instead of referring them as male and female they are often referred as denoted as plus and minus so here you can see now there are many possibilities now in this case both the male gamete and the female gamete can be motile that means both of them can be capable of moving it is also possible that both of them are non motile both of them do not move from one point to another right so this these kind of organisms where the male and the female gametes are exactly identical to each other that is often given a term called isogamy iso means same gamy means gametes so same gametes that is isogamy so examples of organisms where we see isogamy is yeah chlamydomonas spirogyra so these are all examples of green algae which fall under the plantae kingdom so they are simple multicellular organisms so there we see these isogamy but in most of the advanced organisms where sexual reproduction take place the male and female gametes are different from each other so they have got different appearance they have got different structure they have different function so they are quite different from each other so we can easily distinguish them as male and female the best example is human beings in human beings when i talk about the male gamete it is motile that is the male gamete is capable of moving the male sex cell that is the cell which is present inside the body of human male similarly when i talk about the female gamete its main function is food storage so the in in any woman there is a sex cell which is capable of reproduction so it, its main function is storage of food so this is how the female and the male sex cell looks like this is how the female sex cell looks like in human being and this is how the male sex cell looks like so this one male gamete is capable of moving and the female gamete doesn't move but it has the capability to store food now fusion of male and female gametes gave rise to a new organism so both of them fuse together to form a new organism right so these two gametes contain half the amount of dna so when they combine that amount of dna becomes same as what is present in all other cells in the body clear so the idea about gametes is also clear now here after now that we have got the basic idea about sexual reproduction what happens in sexual reproduction roughly so now we will study how these gametes are produced in different organisms that means how a male gamete is produced inside a human male how a female gamete is produced inside a human female so not only human beings we will also talk about sexual reproduction in plants that what, what is a male gamete in plant what is a female gamete in plant and how are they produced so these are the topics which we are going to discuss in detail now 
Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.